Uh, welcome to the No Budget Indie Filmcast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those little films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. My name is Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, are my most excellent co-hosts, Claire Milan. Hello. Kahal Fini. Hello. And today we are joined extra special filmmaker, Tommy Cray. Welcome to the show, Tommy. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Okay, well, so we you told you how the show works. So Claire, tell us, what are we watching this week? So this is a film that actually Tommy made us watch last week. Um, when we were watching, <laughs> we were watching Vegas. some lovely films. I think it was, I'm not sure, was it, yeah, we were watching some lovely films at the Galway Film Fla, virtual Galway Film Fla in a friend's house. And just before we left, Tommy put on what's on this beautiful film. Um, that I was really, really taken aback by. Um, it did stay with me and I hard to sleep that night because it's before we left. But it's a film called, how do you pronounce, anyone speaks French? Does anyone speak French here? No? I don't know. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's but Fauve. Fauve, is it? Fauve. So yeah. F-A-U-V-E. So this film is called Fauve, which means fox in French. And it's directed by um, Jeremy Conte. It's actually not a French French film. It's a French Canadian film, which I didn't realize until I looked up, did some research into it. Mm. And it's about two kind of young, they look like feral kids and they're messing around a quarry and uh, they're playing with each other and um, things uh, get a bit dangerous and uh, no spoilers or anything, but it, it, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's like you think, oh, one boy's going to get injured and the other one's going to get injured and things happen and uh yeah it's um very harsh kind of to watch and yeah. uh it, it is like as if they're two animals maybe like they're like maybe two foxes or something and they're following each other and playing games and it's yeah it, it's very heart-wrenching and raw and realistic and uh yeah, it's and you 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 kind of thinking, oh my god, will something happen to one boy? Will something happen to another boy? And things kind of get out of control. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting. Yeah. But <laughs> I can't really say too much without spoiling it. Oh, I can't we say too much because well, we always can do. We? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Claire, generally you have spoilers. Say, okay, okay, <laughs> spoiler alert. But, but we can um, we can not spoil it. I mean, I mean, we could actually try for okay. a change to talk about a film and not spoil not the film spoilers. for anybody. Yeah, yeah but know. there is quicksand involved, and one of them gets mm -hmm. stuck and pulls oh the other one out. And <laughs> you know, well, no, no spoiler is nothing. But no, it, it's um, no spoilers it, beyond that. <laughs> no spoilers beyond that. But I just thought the way it was filmed and acted and like these two young boys it was so realistic like your your heart jumped to them you 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 felt terrified for them oh my god and one boy looked like something's gonna happen to them the other boy saved him they're playing and they were, they were so feral like as if um they didn't have I don't, think, I don't think it's fair to say they were feral well, you know because they were you know, really I, young kids <laughs> I know I know I know when I was yeah. a kid there was a uh, down the road from us, there was a, a, an abandoned building site at one time, mm -hmm. and we used to go down and play in it. You know? mm -hmm. uh, so you, it, you can imagine very well that they lived close by, and they just mm -hmm. they were just kind of. Well, I, I think it's kind of interesting because well, one of the boys he he was he was had no shoes on. Did I, I think did, did only one of them have no shoes? I think he lost his shoes in, lost in, his the, shoes. Uh, in the muck. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was like he he, he he no top on, and he kind of had like kind of a shaved head and. Do you know, he, he didn't look like he was well looked after. He kind of looked like he was neglected. Yeah. Do you know, so yeah, were, it, when I just looked at him, I could, I could imagine his poor, backstory. But... And yeah, maybe there's, there you know, his family. And there was, there was something with these, with these two boys. Yeah, they were very mean to each other. So like, we've got three guys here. Now, when you were that age, did you ever play with your friends like that? Because like, I don't recall ever like playing, hey, let's throw rocks at each other as a game. Or, you know, some of the, cause you, cause you're right. Like the whole, throughout the film, you're waiting for something to happen to one of them because they're being kind of so mean to each other, but also playing. And, uh, but, but no, I don't, I don't recall ever actually being that mean to any of my friends when I was younger. I don't think, I don't think they were being mean. Well, they weren't, I don't they think were they were, playing, I don't think they were, were, I don't think they were being mean. They were just two young kids, mm. bit boisterous, just playing, you know, that this kind of, this game and, I never get the feeling that 
the interaction between them was 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 too much or you know was inappropriate or over overly violent i thought they kind just, of, they i just kind liked of loved the, each other pardon seemed like they kind of loved each other you know yeah exactly yeah like, um, you know they were mates and mm. i, lo- I like the way it just kind of it kind of it built the suspense i liked it and i didn't like it you know because i mean i don't i don't like like being manipulated having my emotions manipulated <laughs> like that normally and i sometimes i try to kind of step out of it and go uh Artists, they're only actors, you know, it's not real. Like, but you really feel like you're being drawn into it, and uh, you're on the edge of your seat, and you're you're waiting, you're waiting for something to happen, and then, you know, ultimately it does. Yeah, and it's like it's like a, it's kind of like the boy cried wolf thing, you know. I, I kind of sense there was an element of like a parable in it, like at the start where you know he he kind of falls off the train and he's kind of pretending and you're you're already kind of like okay something something bad's gonna happen here isn't you've you've got this kind of sense of foreboding and uh yeah i mean it's it's that thing of children you know kind of like you you push it too far and and you're goaded on by your mates and you know i've you know it's it's a very uh it's a very human thing um but yeah i think i think the two kids were just incredible and and i think wild is uh, the right you know term they do have and i think that children can do that more than like especially like trained actors and stuff like when you see a child like performance like that that is so engaging and uh, detainment would be a good uh analogy to this where you you just it just feels so real and it feels so raw and natural and uh and that's why you're so drawn into it and why you're so uh you know that when things turn bad it's it's just so jaw jaw dropping and heartbreaking um so yeah, I think it's a very, very effective film. I think because of the two uh, lead child performances. So I like the way they didn't they didn't cheat on you in the end. Like they didn't have a kind of a typical feel good kind of Hollywood ending. You know, they 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 went the whole way and uh, they really re- a real you know strong emotional kick to it. You know, sorry, mm. Mark. Yeah, no, I was just saying because on on the children thing, I don't think people give children enough credit for being talented actors. And it's it, and it's probably because as children they're able to just easily, t- you know, tap into those emotions and without really thinking about how it looks or anything like that. So they're not so self conscious about it. Whereas like adult actors, we're constantly thinking, how does this performance look? And these two ch- these two kids, I don't know if they've ever done anything prior to this, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, just the fact that they were able to play these two kids so naturally. And into where you literally believe, like like you said, Claire, to where they have that kind of feral, poor family look to them with the kind of the emancipated looking one without the shirt and the shaved head and that kind of stuff. Um, and, and to get that kind of performance out of children is is just fantastic. And, and obviously credit to the director. Uh, who directed this? Some it person was, I've never uh, heard Jeremy of? Jeremy Conte. And actually, it premiered yeah, in, Jer- yeah, so, um, in 2018, and then was shortlisted for uh, an Oscar as well. So it's won loads of awards. It was nominated. Was was nominated, wasn't it? For, for I think the 91st Oscars yeah. was that last year or the year before? Last year, I think. Yeah. Um, so props to him for getting those performances out of the kids without making it like over the top and unbelievable, but also, you know, not too you know, same thing. It's just really spot on. Generally speaking, whenever you see children. In, in film and short film, like they're they're fantastic, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be really bad, yeah. but, but it's oh like yeah, <laughs> they, like like Have you guys Spiral. seen? A, <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen a kid with a bike? Mm-hmm. No, it's, the, it's a French film about about you know very kind of working class, unlooked after child whose dad abandons him and stuff like that. But it's just kind of reminded me of that in a way, not just because it's French, but because it's like the the performance of the child is just so raw and red it, and it's so yeah gut-wrenching um but yeah as you can see to, like um, with these two kids they're not being looked after and they seem to have each other do you know they, they're like they're probably they're not brothers i don't think you know they're best friends but yeah it, it is like you see they're not looked after but um but yeah i wonder if 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 they had other actors in there who weren't as good would the film come across as well yeah oh, i don't know I, I i would i would question this this idea that they're that they're not they're not looked after they're not that their their parents are somehow negligent you know maybe it's just they're on their summer holidays and they're just running wild maybe they live close by and i know like i don't know what era it was that when i was a kid 
we used to do that. Like we used to like we'd be let out the door during the day and we'd just, you know, feck off. Like sorry for the language, but and there was um there was there was actually there was a forest down the road for me, but uh, when I was a kid and we used to go down to the forest and and we used to like, you know, get into situations now, I think. God, like uh sometimes you know, there was always a possibility something bad could have happened. I remember, I remember actually one time I did um get into a swamp. You know, it probably wasn't uh it probably I was probably wasn't gonna sing to my death or anything, but I remember like shit, you know, this is this is this is dangerous and uh and uh, one of my mates had to kind of pull me out of it, you know. So uh you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I was neglected as a child because of it, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's why it's so relate so relatable as well, is that you really understand that feeling of like, yeah, just helplessness, you know, and uh and like there, yeah, there are no adults around and uh I think it's it's very it's kind of relatable to the kind of the situation as well, which is why I think it works mm-hmm. well. And then Yeah, no- way that when I was a kid, uh, a friend of mine, uh, his next door neighbor died. And he was apparently some old man or whatever and kind of a pack rat. And so as soon as we found out that he died, me and my friend broke into the house and we're like scurrying around. So I totally thought of that when I was watching this and they're sneaking around and stuff. Because absolutely, as a kid, I would totally do this. But I was also not well looked after as a child. So, okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be interested, like, the obviously, the it, it's it's a huge traumatic experience for the, the boy that, you know. Okay, spoiler alert. <laughs> Boy, that's your boy. It's so it's so it's so yeah. hard not to spoil this film. But yeah, yeah, well, you we, know, we, we did really well. Far. We went the entire time we without spoiling it. We yet, totally could know. have not spoiled this film. Yeah, no, we well, you can you can edit this out. But you know, I, I, I'd be curious, like you know, for, for, yeah, to, to come back to this, his story maybe in t- twenty years time and to uh, to see how, how how it actually like how it affected his life. You know, mm. uh, like is he. He's either going to end up as a some sort of addict or maybe an overachiever. Actually, this would be a brilliant a prequel for a feature film, wouldn't it? Like if you had this at the start and then it's, you know, him like as an adult, it could be a great start, starting point for a feature. It could go in so yeah, many different I, directions. It was actually, there was actually, sto- there was a story, I'm from Cornwall where there's lots of like abandoned mine shafts and stuff like that. And there was actually a story like this where someone fell down, like a child fell down the mine. So it's like, it's very, it's like, and I think it's like an, as adults, we watch it and it's like every parent's kind of nightmare, isn't it? Like you, it, it's what, it, that kind of thing of like, yeah. But it's kind of like when you're, as a viewer, when you're watching the child in the quicksand, it's so claustrophobic, like you're so horrified. Mm-hmm. No, oh, it's true and you're like stop yes. struggling like <laughs> no, i don't know you're making it worse yeah like how how do you get out of quicksand is there a mess is there a way because if you struggle actually, more... there is there is, there a, is a way yeah. tutorial yeah. I watch it. but actually yeah you kind of have to be close to the edge i think mm-hmm. you know, he, you I kind think, of yeah. uh you know you if they got youtube out at that point they said yeah. i'm just gonna be on youtube here Look up a couple That's, of, you know, Barry, what the Barry, Barry Giles episode reaction. and yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, hang on, this is a good, uh, good advert this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's how we know the kids didn't have any money because they didn't have phones and the one couldn't have mm-hmm. pulled out his phone and looked up a YouTube video on how to get out of uh, Quickstown. Yeah. YouTube is the, was, could have been the, you know, like yeah. the new parent YouTube really, isn't it? Yeah. Don't, don't ask your parent, ask YouTube. <laughs> Actually, technically, I, I, it was very well done. You know that, that just that that scene. You know, I wonder. Um, I kind of wonder a bit. How, you know, how they manage it? How they it's did really it. well. Like the because mm-hmm. it kind of goes. It starts there and then it cuts back and then it cuts all the way back and you can see it's, it's like oh god, and it's like yeah, I don't. It's been really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, and then the kind That's of like the fade hard. into the landscapes where the kid is just kind of wandering about. And it fades in in and out of these kind of arid alien landscapes, and uh, yeah, like yeah. it looks so like there's Great. nothing around there. It's, it's one of the mm. I think it's one of the best use of landscapes I've seen, and in a really simple way, just the the use of landscape in it. It's it's just really powerful. I think. Yeah, it was kind of very harsh and kind of austere, yeah. and yeah. lifeless. I guess you know. Yeah, it definitely worked. And what have, you know, what what what. what why do you think it was called the the fox? You know, what was the reasoning behind that? Now, because they had a fox. I know there was a fox in it, but like <laughs> the, the fox. I, I kind of got the feeling. Yeah, that how, how does the how does the fox play into the to the film? 
Well, the, the kid, one of the kids sees the fox at the beginning mm-hmm. and the other kid doesn't. The one who dies. Sorry, we're completely just... Oh, God, spoilers. I, <laughs> continued spoilers. I think, we, yeah. I think, you know, the threshold has been breached. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the kid who dies sees the fox. And then um, and then at the end, the, the survivor kid sees the fox and he's kind of like... For it. And I, I got the feeling that that was like, that was the kid, you know, was the fox. I don't know. And then he sees him and it kind of like, it's this emotional... You know, it kind of like he starts to actually process what's happening and feel the kind of, as opposed to just like running around trying to run away from it. He actually starts to process it when he sees this fox, which in a way is just beautiful enough in itself, but uh, without any kind of metaphor or anything. So, mm. And also like when, 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 when the kid, when he saw the fox, the other fellow didn't believe him, you know, so mm. he, and he refused to look. And then at the end, like it was, oh, you know, he was, he was telling the truth and, there's the fox and uh, yeah. every, every time he sees a fox name he's going to be reminded of his friend but also like the they had this little discussion when they were kind of walking away from the train tracks um, it was the only kind of little sort of any background you got and and they were talking about animals can you eat a fox and so on and, and one guy he was like you know he's, he doesn't need animals he's a vegetarian and so he, it was he, he he was he says like he you know he there was some he believed in the sanctity of life you know and he was kind of the the good guy you know who um who ended up like perishing like so he, it, it it gave you some little insight into his like personality like that they that they you know they weren't uh, they weren't you know bad kids basically and I think that scene that you're right that one scene of dialogue which gives you some kind of backstory is really good. It really set, you know, sets the two characters apart where he's saying like, oh, you know, parents are vegetarian and stuff like that. And the other kid's like, oh, I go out hunting with my dad. And it kind of like, it really kind of sets the character, you get a sense of the characters yeah. just from that one scene. And also when they when they were crawling into the, into the kind of the, the factory, the industrial zone, like you just see that the sign is kind of hidden, you know, it's very subtly done. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of, you say, it's like, it's just building fancy sense of threat and danger all the time. Yeah. You know? And it's interesting the ending as well with the the woman who's driving the car and she, the little boy hops into the car. Yeah, it's it interesting. It's like because it, he said something, didn't he, in the car? He's saying, or did he, was he silent? I think he was starting to say like, saying, "I killed my friend" yeah. or something. I, that's what I think he was going to say. Didn't. All right. Yep. No, even to the end, people know that there's a lady that shows up. Sorry. In the car. <laughs> we complete this uh, bit out. And a fox. Yes, and, and a, a fox. fox. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's so we hard. haven't said the part where she puts the little boy in the trunk yet, so we're okay. <laughs> or the aliens yeah. that come down yeah. and, and yeah, save so everyone. We haven't mentioned those. Yeah. She shoots the fox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so rating time. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go first. So okay. I'll give it. I thought it was, it's so raw, uh, brilliantly acted, lovely, brilliantly filmed, fascinating film that will stay with you. So I'll give it four out of five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I'll, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think I'll give it five out of five, actually. You know, I, um, as I said, the, like everything about it, you know, like the, the story, the performances, it was, you know, perfectly, perfectly made perfectly delivered um it'd be hard to you know find the flaw in it in any way so yeah i'll give it five yeah, yeah five. I, I'd, I'd agree with okay. Cahal actually that yeah that i couldn't think of anything about it that i thought was a misstep or i just thought it was an incredibly powerful piece of work so yeah five out of five yeah I was tottering between like four and five, and then I was going to pull a Cahill and do a four and a half. Um, but uh, well, I was but just going to do whatever Cahill said. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm new to this. Yeah, and now I really don't want to do a five because there's already two fives. Uh, but no, I will. I'll do a five. I, I mean, I was trying to think of like reasons not to do a five, and yeah, I, I can I can do a five. Though I feel it's probably more of a four and a half, four and a half. Uh, yeah, and actually, I know we didn't say it, but I, I like the way that you kind of. That he, he he runs away to get help, and then he comes back and it's yeah because he can't find it. You know? and, yeah, so it, it doesn't it doesn't like it's not kind of exploitative where it shows yeah. 
the exactly. moment of it, it just yeah. and it and it lets your imagination do exactly you know, yeah it's even yeah. worse in a way mm. like. oh it is yeah and uh, yeah mm. All right, audience, there you have it. So we really enjoyed the film. We will throw a link into the notes so you can watch it. And as always, feel free to leave us a comment and let you know what you thought of the film. Or of course, you can always reach out to us on social media. At No Budget Show is where you'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And with that, we will say goodbye and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.